Hi class, this is uh, again to replace our session uh, on Wednesday that uh, we will skip. Uh, so this is a, a shorter presentation that's uh, meant to just begin uh, discussing the idea of humility, uh, which is essential to us understanding the, the perspective of Ignatius of Loyola with regards to how do we pursue our vocation or how do we keep on pursuing what is good in our life. We already talked about the idea of commitment, that uh, this kind of pursuit of a meaningful life uh, requires a choice. Uh, we often are tempted to avoid it, but again, the warning of Hoy is be careful, you are entering into what he calls uh, slavery of indecision. So, if you were to then pursue this, uh, according to Ignatius, which is a very important sort of perspective for him, in his spiritual exercises, he explained that a key idea to pursuing a meaningful life is humility. And, and so we will get an overview of that uh, today. And, uh, and we will see how it is not easy to take on this humility that he's talking about. And it's not a humility of like you hide your gifts or ah, I'm not so good at something. No. It's an attitude of the heart that uh, makes you pursue the good consistently in your life. So we will see it uh, in this uh, different ideas that we will talk about. Let's begin with an overview of the concept of humility. Uh, if you were to then look at the concept of humility, you would see that uh, it begins with this. Um, humility requires a conviction that you don't want what's bad. It starts with a conviction inside of you that, you know, I, I want to be a better person. Uh, uh, look look at this. It consists in this, that as far as possible, I, I so subject and humble myself as to obey the law of God, our Lord in all things, so that not even were I made Lord of all creation or to save my life here on earth, would I consent to violate a commandment, whether divine or human, that binds me under the pain of mortal sin? Now, this is couched in spiritual language, but the main point is, how convinced are you of doing the good? Are you convinced enough to say, I will renounce anything that would lead me to what's bad? I will always choose the good. That's at least what um, uh, Ignatius would like to give us. And the first degree or the first step the three kinds right the first step is to say i want to obey to obey the laws of god i want to be good you no know? here james martin says the first degree is one which you would always be obedient to the law of god by leading a moral life here you would do nothing to cut yourself from god you want to do the right thing ashenburner says this amounts to loving someone so much that you would go to whatever trouble may be involved to respond to that person in this case explicit explicit stated desire you want to please your friend and your friend is a good friend you would do whatever it is necessary to do something good to somebody who cares about you you value them so same thing if the object is God or what is good in our life are we willing to pay the price now <laughs> it is obvious that uh, we need to choose the good because there is a part of us that's attracted to what's bad according to Saint Paul I do not understand my own actions for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate so this first degree of uh, of Humility is an important first step. Now, what's the next one? Well, the next one is the willingness to let go of things that are seemingly valuable. But these valuable realities or these material possessions or whatever it is, is preventing us from pursuing the good. Here. I possess it 
if my attitude uh, of mind is such that I neither desire nor am inclined to have riches rather than poverty, to seek honor rather than dishonor, to desire a long life rather than a short life, provided only in either alternative, I would promote equality, e equally the service of God, our Lord, and the salvation of my soul. Is it possible for me to let go of things that would prevent me from pursuing the good in my life? Example, you're convinced that your direction in life is to become a doctor. No. But it would mean sacrificing time and resources and even your own enjoyment to pursue this thing that you're convinced about. It requires a certain letting go of things in your life that seems to be something that would benefit you. A second degree, according to James Martin, is one in which when presented with an option for a choice in life, you strive to free of wanting the choice that would bring wealth, honor, or long life. It's a classic example of Ignatian indifference or detachment. Not only will you do the right thing, you'll be free to accept whatever life presents. Yes, becoming a doctor is a difficult thing. Becoming a doctor requires sacrifice of time and resources. So are you willing to let go of other things to pursue that? Now, you would see the first degree just says, I want to do good. The second degree is, I will do whatever it takes to do the good or to do the thing that I'm convinced about. That is my vocation in life. Now, that requires a certain letting go. The classic... Uh, uh, story in, in, in the Gospels of the rich young man. You know? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Let go of these things. If you want to pursue what's good, let go of these things. But look at the, the, the response of the young man. He went away sad. Now, I've always found this interesting because I mean, if somebody gives me advice of letting go of my possessions, and if I just say, you're crazy, Jesus, that's a crazy suggestion. I will just leave that person or leave Jesus and say goodbye. I thought you would give me good advice. But look at this. The, the young man went away sad. So why would he be sad if the suggestion is crazy? So most likely the suggestion is not crazy. What was being presented to this young man was a life that he was convinced was actually good. What was being offered to him was something he was convinced, you know, I should really do that. But he was so attached to his possessions that he was not willing to let go, even if he was convinced it was the right thing to do. Again, going back to my example, would you let go? of the things that you enjoy for the sake of making a sacrifice of pursuing something higher for you higher like a higher a higher path of life like becoming a doctor which requires a lot of sacrifice won't you be sad realizing that at some point in time you were meant to be a doctor but then you weren't willing to pay the price of pursuing your dreams so again this kind of humility is needed I want to do the good first degree second degree the willingness to pay the price letting go of whatever it is that we seem to, to possess and be willing to let go of it to pursue a higher call that's the second degree of humility uh, it is true that pride in materialism, the things that are the immediate sources of joy, can be hard to let go of. You know? uh, but the point is, uh, we need to reflect, what are we willing to let go of in order to pursue what we are convinced is our calling? That should be something that uh, we need to be aware of. Now, the last degree of uh, of humility is servanthood and that is the dying to oneself 
because you are serving others and y you are doing things not only for yourself but for the sake of others that's a third kind of humility the most perfect way is one in which we actually choose the more humble way in order to be like Christ you decide so much to follow him as Fleming writes his experience are reflected in my own in other words you choose to be poor and even rejected as Jesus was you become a successful doctor everything is yours and then you feel a calling to serve those who won't be able to pay you back. Is it possible for you to hear a calling like that? And the answer is yes. The third kind of humility. No. Jesus said, you know that the rulers and Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. The willingness to go the path going through the path of servanthood you call me teacher and lord you are right and so i am if i then your lord and teacher have washed your feet you also ought to wash one another's feet for i've given you an example that you also should do as i have done classic the washing of the feet is the lowest act of a servanthood uh, oh sorry is the lowest act of being a servant. Servanthood is that path towards taking on the lowest position. Will you do that? Are you willing to pay the price? And he's even saying, if you take that on, it's the kind of love that would push you to lay down your life for the people that you're serving. Again, not so easy. This is the most perfect kind of humility. It consists in this. If we suppose the first and second kind attained, and whenever the praise and glory of divine majesty would be equally served in order to imitate and be in reality more like Christ our Lord, I desire and choose poverty with Christ poor rather than riches, insults with Christ loaded with them rather than honors. I desire to be accounted as worthless, a fool for Christ, rather than to be esteemed as wise and prudent in this world. So Christ was treated before me. Sort of an imitation of Christ. That his laying down everything for the sake of doing what is good. Again, I think we all know that this is not an easy path. But we have seen people who were willing to do this for the sake of serving others. Now, uh, this is the last sort of set of ideas. According to uh, um, uh, this path towards living a good life, we see that this path of humility, choosing the good, choosing to give up what is necessary to pursue the good in our life, and even the willingness to take on a low position in order to serve is the path towards a meaningful life now the the principle here is it's called downward mobility when you go down the lower you go the freer you are this is hard to believe but that is what is required of somebody who is humble magnanimous and generous which describes the idea of humility you must be willing to move down in order to move up. Really, sir? When you go down, that's when you go up? <laughs> the word humility, the root word is humilis, which is just the ground. So it talks about a low position. Now, look, let's begin with the concept of magnanimous. What is magnanimous? Magnus or great. Now, the word magnus or great or magnanimous is a word that defines a person who is great but does not hold on to his greatness. Now, let me give you an example. If in a basketball game, Ateneo Lasal, okay, Ateneo loses to Lasal. Well, Ateneo could not be magnanimous because we lost. <laughs> but if we won, we won. And when we won, we 
respected our opponent like UP or Lasal. That's called magnanimous. Your greatness is something that you don't hold on to. You're not magnanimous when you make fun of the person or the team that you beat. You make fun of them. That's not magnanimous. Magnanimous is when you're on top and you're willing to look down and say, Hey, come up. <laughs> That's magnanimity. Now, generosity, on the other hand, is the ability to look at who you are. Someone who has so much and you give that away so that you can make a difference in another person's life or in, a, in the lives of people. Now, the, the word generous used to be a, a word that referred to people of nobility, royalty, those who are rich. But they're the kind of rich, if you have good genes or you are noble, what kind of rich person are you? Well, the rich person is the one who has the capacity to share. And it used to be a term, the word generous, used to be a term referring to these kinds of people who were people who were recognized by society to have so much and yet what they have is something that they share so that word became like a word to point to people who are willing to give you know, to others especially because they know that in giving to others they can share in the blessings that they have now generosity is not the giving wherein you give your excess example if bill gates gives like a million dollars that's nothing but then when you hear uh, a uh, a story of a great businessman warren buffett who gave away most of his earnings to charity that's something else <laughs> when you give much and you what you retain is much less than what you gave away uh, that's something else that's generosity now all of this all of this is telling us that magna magnanimous greatness that looks down at those who are below and say, hey, come up. Generosity, people who have but share. No. All of this is talking about humility. Now, imagine this. If you are a person who has so much and you are a person of greatness and then you share, you give it away. What's happening? It seems that in your greatness, you bring yourself down. And, but in bringing yourself down, what do you do? You give away things and you share what you have. And look at the kind of impact a person like that can make. Isn't it the case that when you go down, that's when you move up? Move up in what? In your ability to make a difference in the world. No? So, um, I think uh, this is enough for us to sort of consider now what kind of person do we want to be if you are pursuing a meaningful life I guess the three kinds of humility is your path you choose to do the good you decide to let go whatever is necessary to pursue what's good what you're convinced about is your vocation and even the willingness to take the lowest position and be a servant but what are you following when you take that path you are taking the path of downward mobility having less is the path towards giving more and so I think it's worth considering uh, some of these ideas and reflect on the three kinds of humility 
and I hope that this simple sort of a uh, lecture uh, will help you reflect on this idea as you read the different articles in this module and just pause uh, and maybe respond by uh, by answering the question in this in this discussion board and allow the this set of questions to help you reflect on this simple lecture God bless you and uh, see you uh, next week.